Hollywood is located in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and sports nine roller coasters, amazing shows, extensive theming, and fantastic food. In short, this is one of the best parks in the country, if not the world. In September of 2020, I had the opportunity to visit the park for two days during my coaster trip. While this was my first time at the park, it will not be my last. Before I move on, I should mention that the house is under renovation, so if you hear noises, that's what it is. Let's start with the theming, since this is the first thing you notice when you walk into the park. There is theming everywhere you look. There wasn't a single moment in the park where I didn't feel completely enveloped in the world of Dolly Parton. And I should mention that while the park is themed to Dolly Parton, her face isn't everywhere. If someone who hates Dolly Parton were to visit the park, they would still have a good time. But how can you hate Dolly? Come on. Anyways, everything in the park is themed. There are a few distinct areas of the park. So when you walk in, you enter an area that feels similar to a Disney Main Street. All the buildings have a very charming feel to them. The general flow of the park will take you to the right towards the 1950s themed area. This is home to Lightning Rod, which I will get to later on, or you can watch my full review in the card. There is a diner, and lots of time accurate cars and airstream that serves Dippin' Dots. You follow along the path, and for the most part, the rest of the park just feels generically country. There are variations in the country's theming. The area around Mystery Mine has a mining theme. Imagine that. The area around Thunderhead feels more like the 1880s, similar to Silver Dollar City. Another area of the park to mention is Wildwood Grove. This part of the park is really well done and has a theme of an enchanted forest. I will say that this area of the park felt a little barren. It felt like there weren't many trees around to finish off the area. The attractions there were all good, but the area felt incomplete. Maybe the reason for that is the rumored expansion to that part of the park. But the park as a whole has one of the best atmospheres you'll experience at a theme park. One thing I will mention about the theming is that it didn't feel as cohesive as their sister park, Silver Dollar City. But maybe that's just me nitpicking. In terms of shows, I was able to see four. We saw the Bird Show, a group of singers with a band accompanying them, a band playing bluegrass, and a street performance singing doo-wop style songs. The worst of these shows was probably the bird show, since it didn't have much of a story to it. But still, it was enjoyable, and most parks don't have a show like this, let alone a bald eagle rehabilitation facility inside the park. All the shows were really enjoyable and worth your time to stop and watch. One of my favorite things at theme parks is when I stumble on a street performance. It feels like stumbling on a hidden gem, and it makes me stop what I'm doing and take a breather and just enjoy. Now, let's talk coasters. Dollywood has nine, and I got to ride each of them. The first coaster that I got to ride was Blazing Fury. This ride is a clone of Fire in the Hole at Silver Dollar City. The ride features animatronics that tell the story of a burning town and firefighters trying to save the day. Between this ride and Fire in the Hole, Blazing Fury is not as good. This one had a worse plot. The one at Silver Dollar City is based on historical events that happened in the Ozarks. Plus, Fire in the Hole has a splashdown effect. 
but Blazing Fury has a really cool falling bridge effect that is not featured on Fire in the Hole. The next new credit I got was Tennessee Tornado. This ride took me by surprise. It takes a while before the ride actually begins because the first thing you do is briefly stop on the transfer track before starting up the slow lift hill and making a slow right hand turn into the drop. I did think that it was a bit of a rough ride, but the drop through the tunnel makes it worth it. Okay, so just got off Tennessee Tornado, number 35, and wow, that's a good ride. That pulls some serious positive Gs. That was great. I am a big fan. So on the ride, um, they had just dispatched us, and the guy behind us was not, he kept taking his mask down, and so we were literally dispatched, and then he, the guy in the control station stopped us right then and said, sir, please put on your mask. I didn't know they could do that, but we had already started moving and then we stopped very abruptly and told the guy to put on the mask. Come on, people. After Tennessee Tornado, I rode Wild Eagle. This was my first wing coaster and I think this coaster fits well with the park. The ride is themed to bald eagles, which is fitting since they do have a bald eagle rehabilitation facility in the park. The theming of this ride had an alpine vibe to it with a beautiful station. Not to mention the amazing theme song performed by Dolly Parton. The ride was fun. A big B&M coaster that is graceful and complements the park nicely. Okay, just got off Wild Eagle. Great ride. First wing coaster. That's fun. But yeah, that was just a fun all around ride. Next coaster that I got to ride was Fire Chaser Express. This was one of my favorite rides in the park. This ride is fun no matter how old you are or what row you sit in. It has some on-ride theming and effects which is nice to see. That sort of stuff makes coasters like these so much more enjoyable. The ride isn't too intense but it gives good airtime and it is just a really fun overall experience. Okay so I just got off Fire Chaser Express and I have to say that was really fun. I was just laughing the whole time. I mean, it's technically a family coaster, but like, that was a great ride. I would happily get back on that again. The next coaster I rode was Mystery Mine. And as of 2020, this coaster has some of the slowest operations in the park because of the way that they are social distancing. But the ride itself was fun. I would call it a quirky ride. It is great in terms of theming, but the ride itself is a bit rough and has a janky layout. I would say that the drop after the first hill is more intense than the big 95 degree drop. Okay, so I just got off Mystery Mine. I have never been on anything like that. Wow, that was something. Um, that was, I was not expecting the special effects. So spoiler alert, there's fire that they launch at you, like at your face. I was not expecting that. Um, yeah, it was a great ride though. Really fun, kind of creepy and cool. The theming is great. And while this ride might not have the best layout, the theming is amazing. A bit of a spoiler, but it shoots fire at your face. And the first time I rode this, I thought that the fire was the scariest part because I wasn't expecting it. This ride is a bit rough, but it is worth it for the theming. After my ride on Mystery of Mine, I made my way to Dragonflyer. This is the park's suspended coaster. This ride is geared towards families, but don't let this fool you. This ride is a lot of fun. Out of all the rides in the park, I might have ridden this one the most. It was a walk-on every single time that I was over there. And something that always makes the experience more fun is when the ride-ups are fun and having a good time. This was the case when I went. They were joking around with each other while still getting trains through quickly. Okay, so just got off Dragonflyer. I've been on one of these Vekoma family suspended coasters before, but this one was really fun. It was pretty intense. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The ride is super smooth and it has a fun layout including tunnels and trenches. This coaster fits in really nicely with the rest of the rides over in Wildwood Grove. It is a great ride every time. Next coaster of the day was Thunderhead. This ride has a very twisted layout that makes it difficult to know which way you will be heading next. I thought that it was a bit rough but I guess that's the charm of wooden coasters. In my opinion the front row gives the best airtime while also being the smoothest. I had a blast when we would pop up over a hill at a bank and get some airtime. I will say that this ride doesn't have much theming. The station is pretty basic and bland with the exception of the station flyby. 
I was a little disappointed that the ride didn't have much of a theme, but the coasters were still lots of fun, so I guess it makes up for it. Those were all the coasters I was able to ride on day one. I tried to ride Lightning Rod, but it was down for the majority of the day. On day two at the park, I was able to get a few rides on Lightning Rod. If you want more of my in-depth thoughts, go check out the video in the card above. The ride has a really cool car theme that fits in nicely with the surrounding area of the park. When the ride is open, the airtime is spectacular. This isn't really a ride that everyone would enjoy like Dragonflyer or Fire Chaser Express. Lightning Rod is targeted to the thrill-seeking market. As of when this video is being made, I have been on 48 different roller coasters, but this one is my favorite. Okay, so here we are, day two at Dollywood, and we just got off Lightning Rod. Wow, first time I've been on it, that was phenomenal. We rode in the middle, which wasn't the best, but it was still amazing. I cannot complain, that was phenomenal. I want to get back in line, but I think the line is too long, so. After the amazing rides on Lightning Rod, my next new credit was Whistlepunk Chaser. There isn't much to say about this ride. This is the kiddie coaster at the park. There is a clone of it at Silver Dollar City, but the one at Dollywood does have some light theming around it. Now I want to talk about an important part of the theme park experience, the food. Dollywood has some of the best theme park food. I had two meals in the park while I was there. The first was a burger at Red's Diner. The line for this restaurant was super long and I thought that the food was okay. In terms of burgers, I've had better. Something to mention is that this restaurant does not offer free water cups, so I had to pay for my drink. The second place that I had a meal was in Wildwood Grove. I had learned my lesson with Red's Diner, and I made sure to bring a water cup from a nearby place with me. This was my favorite meal that I had at the park. It was Mexican, and you got to choose what meat you have and what toppings you want. And, for the price, this should fill you up pretty well. It reminded me of Percy's at Silver Dollar City. I thought that Percy's had a better value since it is about a dollar cheaper and comes with chips and salsa. The last food item that I had was the famous cinnamon bread, and it was amazing. I'm pretty sure that Silver Dollar City has the same recipe for their bread, but it was still amazing. Definitely worth having. So, the park as a whole is amazing. One of the best parks in the country. One thing that I think the park needed was a traditional dark ride. They have two dark ride coaster hybrids, but they could benefit from a dark ride that is suitable for kids of any age. I think that a Wildwood Grove theme would work really well for a dark ride. But the rest of the park is really well maintained and themed. Anyone who has this as their home park is incredibly lucky. I can't wait to go back to Dollywood in the future. So do you agree with my thoughts on Dollywood? Or if you haven't been to the park, what is one thing that you look forward to the most? Let me know in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching. God bless.